Days on from the attack, locals and tourists are still coming to the beach to pay their respects to the 38 dead. Until Saifuddin Ruski opened fire here last Friday, authorities had not known he was a threat. Since then, they've linked him to militant groups in Libya where he was allegedly trained. They're also pointing the finger at radical preachers. The government says around 80 unregistered mosques are fueling extremists and that they will be closed. In Sousse, many welcome that decision. All mosques in Tunisia must be under the government control because the terrorists we are currently facing come from mosques that are not under the government control. We don't know what kind of preachers are there, we don't know what's happening inside, but it's definitely out of the norm. It is a very good decision. We are peaceful people. And Islam is a religion of modesty and mercy, not extremism. The commands of God and Prophet Muhammad do not include such heinous acts. Therefore, we must not damage the image of Islam. This way, we are protecting the peaceful image of Islam. Tunisian law stipulates that the state supervises all mosques. That helps ensure the selection of moderate preachers. But since the toppling of the president in 2011, officials say more radical Islam has flourished in Tunisia. Many believe terrorist organizations are using unregistered mosques to indoctrinate and recruit. Shutting down mosques is controversial and critics fear it could provoke a backlash. To many here, one question answers the debate. Why would a mosque want to keep its activities unregistered far from government supervision? To end the suspicion at a time where Tunis suffers from extremist ideologies, many here believe that these 80 mosques should be given the chance to register themselves or temporarily be shut down. Adel Mahrui, CCTV, Sousse, Tunisia.